Welcome to our waxing clinic. Today I'm going to explain to you my simplified waxing system that's guaranteed to have you skiing in less than five or ten minutes when you arrive at your ski area. So nothing to be afraid of. You don't have to be afraid of waxing your skis or choosing the correct wax because it's really very, very simple. First of all, you have to understand how skis work. And skis work in a very elegant but simple way. It allows us to transport ourselves over the surface of the snow without sinking into the snow. So we need two things to successfully transport ourselves across the snow. We need grip for traction and we need glide in order to reduce our effort. And the way it works is very simple. When we have all of our weight concentrated on one foot, the ski presses into the snow and that increased pressure and contact equals greater friction, which equals greater traction. When we reduce our weight on the ski by simply transferring our weight from one foot to the other foot so that our weight is evenly balanced on both feet, we only have 50% of our body weight on each ski and therefore we have reduced the amount of pressure underneath the bottoms of our skis and as a result reduce the friction and improve the glide. We actually test skis to ensure that they fit an individual and it's not good enough to consider what the manufacturers think a pair of skis will do because there is just not that much control in the manufacturing process and as a result skis turn out. Just as every skier who's this tall doesn't weigh the same amount, every ski that's that length doesn't have the same ability to distribute weight over the surface of the snow. There's a lot of variation and we find that variation by testing and matching those skis to the individual. A perfect ski would completely flatten out with 100% of your body weight on it in such a way that the camber, the arch in the middle of the ski, is completely flat when 100% of your body weight is applied. Not only does it have to be flat, it has to be flat with a certain amount of pressure concentrated in that middle portion of the ski in order to ensure that you get proper grip or proper traction. The next part of the way the ski has to perform is that in the glide phase, when 50% of your body weight is on each foot, you want to make sure that the skis are not completely flat. In fact, we want to ensure that the portion of the ski from approximately where your heel is to about 30 centimeters in front of your toe is not going to be touching the surface of the snow. If it does touch or drag in the surface of the snow, you're going to ski very slowly. And because that's the part of the ski that we're going to put special sticky wax on to improve the way that the ski grips the snow, we want to make sure that wax is not dragging in the snow because first of all, it's going to glide very slowly if it's dragging and second of all, it's going to wear off very quickly if it's dragging. It's so important that if the skis don't fit you, then nothing you can do will improve the performance of the skis. What is snow? Snow is that crystalline form of water that falls from the sky in the colder temperatures of the winter. So snow crystals have rather interesting characteristics that change under varying conditions. And there are, in fact, three factors that influence the characteristics of snow. Most of us are familiar with the most obvious characteristic of snow, um, and that's uh, the, um, its dependency on temperature. Obviously, above the freezing point of water, it's pretty difficult to get snow to exist for very long. And as the temperature goes down in snow, the ice crystals that make the characteristic snowflake change dramatically. Sharp, hard crystals of snow have a very distinctive characteristic. Any of you who've tried to go out for a walk on a really, really icy cold day in the snowpack, remember that characteristic squeaking sound. And that squeaking sound is the result of the ice crystals rubbing against each other. Another one is humidity. And humidity is related to the amount of moisture in the 
air and it has a dramatic impact on the characteristics of the snow. As the humidity increases, the snowflakes fill in. The crystals that make up that six-point crystal tend to get more rounded. And third is age of the snow. As snow gets older, it changes. When it first arrives, it's nice and sharp and pointy. It has that beautiful crystalline form. That's what happens as it lands on our clothing and we look at the beautiful star shape of that six-point crystal. That's new snow. When the snow isn't so new, it doesn't look so pretty. It tends to age uh, poorly. Um, as it gets older, the snow crystals tend to break up. They tend to round up. Skier traffic is another important factor in influencing the characteristics of snow. Skier traffic will um, dramatically alter the snowflakes and also make them rounder over a period of time. So if we want to understand how snow changes, we have a spectrum, okay? We have a range of characteristics of snow. From one end of the spectrum, we have the sharpest, most pointed snow crystals. And those exist at the end of the spectrum where we have cold, fresh, dry snow. Okay? At the other end of the spectrum where the snowflakes have transformed and are most rounded and least uh, like that beautifully formed snow crystal, we have warm, humid, old snow. All of those factors work together to make snow a very, very complicated thing.